Thanks, Ray. Good afternoon. Welcome to the meeting of the Northern Planning Committee. I am Councillor Paul Wynn, Chairman of the Committee. We are not expecting a fiver today with the events of the NOR sounding please leave the building and gather at the front of the building. I'm obliged to inform you that this is a meeting that is being live streamed and recorded. But I've also asked you to please ensure that mobile phones are switched off and ensure the volume of your laptop is muted. To ensure the members of the committee and all the points raised by the public, speakers are properly heard, I must advise you that they will not tolerate any disruptive behaviour. This is a meeting held in public, not a public meeting. And if such behaviour takes place and persists, I will adjourn the meeting. Members should ensure that they are present through the meeting, as you cannot vote on any item if you've not heard all the debates. Can members and officers introduce themselves each time before they speak, so those listed know who's listening know who's speaking. I shall now ask members of the committee and officers to introduce themselves. So, Mike, would you like to start, please? Uh, Mike Isherwood, uh, Shropshire Councillor for Osmond Street West. Good, Clark. Um, uh, Councillor for Basin Hill, Colin and Sutton. Hopefully, just for Basin Hill in a few minutes' time. Uh, Councillor Gary Burchett, uh, Division for Bagley. Uh, Edward Towns, Councillor for Wem, Wem Rural and Wixel. Mark Jones, Vice Chairman of Planning and Councillor for Gaboyne, Western Wind and Salatin. Jeff Elmer, Councillor for Ellesmere, Perpen. It sounds bad, Mike. David Vassimer, Councillor for Underdale in Swiftly. Matt Green, Quarry and Coaton. John, could you kick off the officers, please? Um, John Shaw, Senior Planning Officer, North Area Team. Philip Mallon, new planning manager. Kim Brown, solicitor. And Emily Marshall, committee officer. Thank you. Item one, apologies for absence. Uh, we have one apology, George Farrow, and she is being substituted by Phil Davenport. Two, minutes of further minutes held on the 8th of November, 2022. <coughs> Thank you. Seconded. Thank you, Mark. Um, public questions on received for disclosable pecuniary interests. Anybody got any? Thank you, Matt. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, items one, uh, sorry, not item on the list, that's items five and six. I am the ward councillor, and so therefore I shall. Uh, take myself to the back of the room on that. Uh, I also need to declare that as uh, a town councillor on the town council planning committee, just for the avoidance of doubt, I have a dispensation to come to an alternative opinion that uh, that I may have uh, expressed at that particular meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, anybody else? No. Okay. Five, which is Ison Rally House, Park Street, Tuesday. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Right. This application is for the fitting of a temporary timber frame over damaged infill panels to stabilise this section of the wall in order to enable more detailed investigation of the timber frame and development of a per permanent repair plan at Rowley's House, Barker Street in Shrewsbury. There are no updates to this application. Uh, the application is brought to committee as it involves works to a council-owned building that is not in line with the council's statutory functions. The building is Grade 2 star listed and its historic England were consulted who raised no objections and as such the development is considered to be in accordance with the planning listed building and conservation areas at 1990. I'll now run through the plans. Uh, the one in front of you is the site location. Uh, with the application uh, outlined in red. Uh, there it is, that's a bit clearer, showing the building itself outlined in red. In the centre of the pan there. Uh, that red circle uh, indicates where the, where the temporary works are taking place. 
and there it is in more detail with the, with the timber frame. Uh, that's detail of what it what it what is included in the temporary repairs, <coughs> and there's a photograph indicating the area on the building itself. Detail on the works is uh, as outlining the opposite appraisal, and with no adverse comments received, the recommendation is one of approval subject to conditions as outlined in Appendix One attached to the report, and that concludes my presentation on this application. Chair, thank you. Thank you, Philip. Uh, right, I have a local member down here to speak. Nat, would you like to speak? No, okay, thank you. So, I'll open up to the floor then. Thanks first, then Mark, then Ted. Well, I'd only briefly say, Chair, that the, the reasons that it is here before us is, is um, because of our involvement with the building. Um, it needs to be done. Um, I, I think we should be aware of the comments of Historic England. Um, who say that a more permanent repair should be done at some stage in the near future. But in the interim, I'm happy to move the officer's report and recommendation. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, Ben said, uh, Councillor Hunt said, what I was going to say, and I'll second it. Thank you, ma'am. Ed? Thank you, Chair. Uh, only a brief comment. There was the previous application relating to the scaffolding at the front of it, and I just wanted to say, the sooner we can get rid of that, the better. The front of the building, uh, it's a mess. I'll get on with it. Thank you very much, Chair. Anybody else? <clears throat> All those in favour? We can show hands on this side. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Right, we should go to item six. Let's again introduce me again. Philip, you doing this? Yeah, me again. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, another uh, what I consider straightforward application. Uh, this one is for internal alterations affecting a grade two listed building for the construction of a new accessible WC on the ground floor. Again, no updates. Application is brought to committee as it involves works not in accordance with the council statutory functions to a council owned building. Uh, as the build, this building is Grade 2 listed, Historic England were not a statutory consultee in this application. Site location plan to show where it is in relation to the town. Uh, that's the, uh, the building outlined in red. Again, on the block plan. Indication where the WC and cloaking rather is going to be situated. And that's a photograph of where it is. Uh, this is, all, like I said, considered a straightforward application for the installation of an internal water closet, and there are no objections to the proposal, and as such, recommendation is one of approval, subject to conditions as outlined in Appendix 1 attached to the report. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you, Philip. Right, we'll move straight to the floor. Thank you, Gary. Uh, recommend that we go with the uh, decision and approve this plan, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Second, second. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I, I, I was going to say, but I, I'd second that. It needs doing. It's, 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 yeah. Any other speakers? No. So, we go for the vote. All those in favour, please show. There we go. Yeah, it's again. Thank you very much. I don't think we're quite this quick in the next one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, Oswald House, 13 Oswald Road, Oswald Street. Present to Ms. Phyllis? Yes. There you go, thank you. Right, okay, so sorry. Right, then, this application is for changing use from commercial use, Class C, at ground floor, with self contained residential units on the first, second, and third floors. And on these Upper three floors will be 14 bedroom, bedrooms as multiple occupation dwelling. That That is where there's a bedroom for each of the tenants and they share kitchen and living room facilities. Uh, on the ground floor, it's proposed two residential units uh, on, uh, in the shape of one, a one, one bedroom unit and a one two bedroom unit. Members' attention is drawn to the update sheet and the requirement for Section 106 in order to, order to secure the provision of an off-site contribution towards open space. So, therefore, I, I must remind members, the recommendation is 
to as per the conditions in in Appendix One and the applicant's signing of a Section One of Six in all order to provide off-site open space enhancements, which I'll come to further later. Uh, the first slide shows the location as outlined in red in relationship to the town of Oz Street, opposite the old railway station. Uh, this is the location and block plan. Building is outlined in grey. Open space provided at the rear here with cycle storage and car parking for up to five vehicles alongside. That is the current uh, uh, arrangement with the building, which I believe is in currently in use as an accountant's office on, on the floor level in any case. Uh, that's the uh, front, existing front and rear elevations, side elevations, and the floor pans. That's existing basement and ground floor. First and second. And the third floor, all existing. Uh, proposed front and rear, you'll note very little change. Uh, it's, it's similar to what it is now uh, in, in external uh, arrangements. Uh, side elevation, side elevation. Again, very similar to existing. And the proposed basement and ground floor. And the first and third floor. Right, uh, this is exist the photographs of the existing site. Uh, that's the, the first photograph indicates the building itself up against the road and that's the park into the side. A uh, clear view of the park into the side and uh, the rear elevation. The site is located within the Austin Conservation Area to which it is considered the proposed development will have no detrimental impact on the conservation area and thus the application in accordance with the Planning Listed Building Conservation Areas Act 1919. Both Oxford Town Council and the local member have raised objections to the application as outlined in paragraph 4.21 uh, of the report. Uh, there were no re objections received from members of the public. The internal layout of the residential accommodation proposed to be valid, there was 4.22. Sorry, yeah. objections from the public. Right. Six objections. Uh, so, sorry, I do stand corrected there, and I, I, I was intending to check that one out. Um, yes, you're quite right. Uh, I, that, that's an error in my in my typing there. It, it, I should, it should say it was, say I missed six out six objections. I do apologise for that. Anyhow, Austin Town Council local member have raised objections to this application as outlined in paragraph 4.21. And I have misread this. I have got down on, on you actually that there was objections, which means misread that. Okay. The internal layout of the residential accommodation proposed to, does meet the requirements of the minimum space standard requirements internally. That is the, the, the accommodation inside and, and our housing team have accepted that uh, internal layout does meet uh, minimum space standards. Uh, this limited car parking is to be provided to the side of the property, as I've already outlined in the presentation. This is in line with current arrangements, and it is noted Shropshire Council Highways have raised no objections. Members are also advised that in order to operate as a dwelling in multiple occupation, the applicant's operators will require such a house, la, house license from the council's regulatory services who have not objected to the application. Uh, their comments are outlined in 4.13. More details on this is provided in section 6.3 of the officer's report. As indicated, the application proposes six, sorry, five car parking spaces to the side of the building, along with cycle storage provision. 16 as set out in section 6.5 of the report. Also proposed is amenity space to the rear. 
This will equate to approximately six square meters per bedroom. Uh, this, it is accepted as an under provision, and to compensate for this, as I've touched on earlier, the applicants have agreed to pay a commuted sum towards open space enhancement off-site. Uh, this is to enhance existing open space within the surrounding locality. I understand there is open space within approximately 70 metres of the site. All this would need to be agreed by a Section 106 agreement. As set out in the officer's summary to the report, this is a finely balanced application in that internally the building meets all requirements for residential accommodation as proposed. However, outside car parking space is limited, albeit a town centre location, along with on-site open space provision also considered limited. Uh, taking all the material considerations into consideration, the recommendation is one of approval, subject to the conditions as set out in Appendix 1, attached to the report, and delegated authority to the Assistant Director to secure a suitable financial contribution via a Section 106 agreement towards off-site open space enhancement and any recommendation, any amendments to the recommended conditions as considered necessary by the Assistant Director. Thank you, Mr Chair. That concludes my presentation on this application. Thank you, Philip. Just to know, just seeing Steve Davenport come in. Sorry, Steve, you can't partake in this. Yes, I understand that. Yeah. Can I just ask a question? Can I not partake at all? No, I'm not no. in this one, I'm afraid. Uh, so we'll carry on now. We have uh, speakers on this. We have three speakers on this. First one is against, it's Judith Williams. Let's come forward, Judith. <coughs> <coughs> Judith, you have three minutes. Do you want, would you like a warning, a second warning? Um, I think I'll be all right. I did okay. time myself on this. Okay, no problem. I'll be very strict on the three minutes. Okay. You won't start time until you start talking. Okay. So I press this. Right hand button. Okay. And then it then just go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Light up. Light should come on. There you go. The proposal for 14 bed sits, two flats, five parking spaces, and 16 cycle stands is overdevelopment. It is unsuitable, unviable and unsafe. It infringes part of the national planning framework and is contrary to current guidelines. Up to 32 adults and potentially four children or additional adults crammed into a building with inadequate kitchen and laundry facilities is overcrowding and will lead to noise, nuisance, disputes and poor quality of life. The communal kitchen and dining areas directly overlook the first floor bedroom area of Eden Cottages, which is unacceptable invasion of privacy. A small car park taken over by five car parking spaces, 16 cycle stands, does not show provision of the, of the space for 32 wheelie bins that would be needed to service the occupants. The only place for the bins would be out in the outside seating area. Two benches with a view of the bins is an unpleasant and unhygienic recreational environment offering poor quality of life and potential health and mental health issues. The car parking benches and cycle stands back onto the gardens of Eden Cottages with potential noise and nuisance to the occupants of those gardens, especially in good weather, is an infringement on their right to privacy and peaceful enjoyment. The overspill car park facilities opposite the development is paid for and therefore largely unaffordable to the inhabitants. The detrimental effect on generally um, on the locality of Oswald Road, Orchard Street and Eden Street is noise, nuisance and potential disputes between the neighbours. It is unacceptable because it creates an unsafe environment that could lead to antisocial behaviour, crime, fear of crime. It does not promote confident feelings of safety, health or well-being. Small businesses play a vital role in our economy. There are three shops next to this development. These are successful start-up businesses set up by the owners who wanted to make professional services out of their interests and skills. They survive and thrive in the area, which is off location, because of the reasonable rents, their own business skills and helped by the car parking facility outside the shops. These businesses would be adversely affected if the overspill car parking from the development interfered with customer car parking in the day and residents of the four flats overnight. 
This is an overpowering proposal that should be revised to form a more sympathetic plan. I speak as the owner of the neighbouring block, um, owning with my husband shops and flats for the last 44 years. I've run businesses in that block and I've actually lived there myself. So I have um, knowledge of the area. Oswald Street Town Council, Council Care and others, including myself, have objected to this development. And so Shropshire councillors are respectfully requested to give full weight to these objections and reject this application. Thank you. <laughs> time. Right, the next speaker is Duncan Kerr. You'd like to come forward, please. <coughs> have a yeah. Not sure. Just pull your microphone to the big I can take through the accuracy of Judy. Okay, so I think Judith has summed up the issues extremely well. She's supported here by Tish and Gwen, two local residents who'd love to be able to speak to you but can't do so because of the restrictions uh, on speaking. They live in the two cottages which back on to this property. The history of this area was that it was a mix, a mix of cottages, a college, commercial units, this was previously a bank, this particular unit, and the flats. A delicate balance, but a balance that worked. However, in the last few years, we have seen more and more and more multi-occupied units which is causing major social problems and, frankly, a cycle of decay. Um, we have a police partnership panel in Oswald Street. We meet regularly with the police. And the one area of the town which has been the predominant focus of that is this area. It has led to police dispersal orders. It has led to, I was amazed by the amount of police resources going into this area to protect vulnerable residents at high risk of being cuckooed. Um, and that is of daily visits by the police, because once somebody is cuckooed, the impact on that whole area of that day is dramatic. So you've got a lot of police activities going in to protect in the situation as it is. This is a conservation area. It's surrounded at the rear by small terrace houses, built for railway workers very in close proximity to this. Housing associations, unfortunately, have been selling their properties in this area, which sort of tells you what might be happening. If you look just down the road, there's Queen's Road, um, Queen, which was a former hotel owned by a house association, sold and undoubtedly a private developer would take that on and we go back into multi-occupied. But unfortunately, you're getting a more reputable, you're getting, you know, people who have a social um, conscience to, to develop and manage the property having to move out the area. The Town Council objected to this. The Town Council last night supported an application elsewhere in Oswald Street for 22 multi-occupied units. So the Town Council's not got a problem at all with multi-occupied units. It's all about where they're being placed and the character of the accommodation. I think the officer said it was finely balanced. I think he said balanced, but I think you need to think not only about the lack of open space and car parking. I'm not quite sure where the open space funding would go to. There's no immediately publicly available open space. There's a park owned by the town, uh, by um, Shropshire Council, I don't know, 100 yards or 200 yards away, but I'm not sure what benefit that would have to compensate for this development. And I think more weight should be given to the intensity of the occupation and the dramatic impact that will have on the amenities and the character of an area which is very marginal at the moment and problematic. 16 properties in total is just too many. I've spoken to all the residents here and I've spoken to Judith. None of them would have objected to say six units. They're not against multi-occupation, it's the extent of multi-occupation. And I think the planning committee has to draw a line somewhere and say none of us are against providing homes for people and more multi-occupied is clearly going to be the future. But equally we don't want to repeat problems of the past and create ghettos, which then create homes nobody can wish to live in and more problems. So it's about the number of units that's here that is the problem. It was unanimously by town council from all parties um, objected to this, and I'd urge the committee to listen to their objections and to support us. Thank you. Our third speaker, uh, David Morse, like to come forward. <clears throat> all the application. David, you have three minutes. You'd like a third second warning? Yeah, just in case. Okay. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Chair and members. My name is Dave Morse of JMP Northwest. And it's my pleasure to speak on behalf of the applicants and support the redevelopment of Oswald House and to try and allay some of the concerns put forward. We act for St David's Group, um, a property developer with 25 years worth of experience. They're very experienced in the uh, sort of um, multi occupancy um, game. Um, as part of their management of portfolios, all potential tenants undergo a very vigorous vetting process. And through the careful selection of applicants and the high quality accommodation that they provide, 
management issues are traditionally minimalised and their developments do sit harmoniously within their respective communities and do add value to the local economy. In terms of this application, you have all the relevant information and the detailed officer's report in front of you, which outlines how with the imposition of conditions and the 106 to be agreed, the proposed development is acceptable in development management terms. As a general point, it's worth noting that the applicants have worked closely with officers to ensure that the proposal provides a compliant development, preserving the residential amenity of existing and surrounding properties, and will deliver a high quality environment for future residents, and whilst preserving the character and appearance of the observatory conservation area, and ultimately deliver the overarching objective of sustainable development. Just before I look to raise, uh, address concerns raised just now, I'd like to respectfully draw members' attention to statutory consultation responses, which are in the officer's report. You'll note from the pack that there's been no objection from highways, public protection, drainage or conservation. It's their collective view that through the imposition of conditions, the proposal is compliant with the development plan, and this has ultimately led to your officer's recommendation. In terms of a couple of specific points, on the matter of amenity, um, your officers have provided a detailed account of the assessment undertaken. It, cl it clearly demonstrates within the application pack that all the relevant standards have been met internally, if not exceeded in most cases. Uh, satisfaction of these standards should provide assurances that the development will function appropriately through the life of the application and, and does not represent overdevelopment. As it relates to the external space, you'll see that there's a secure and functional external garden to the rear. Um, it's, in addition to this, the site is well located for future residents to maximise the extensive health and wellbeing benefits of Cambrian Park. And links to that park are both safe and suitable for pedestrians and cyclists alike. And this provides a highly effective <coughs> supplement to the other side. Um, in respect to parking, um, obviously highways have raised no objection and it's a sustainable location. We would just point out that obviously, you know, um, Shropshire is traditionally quite rural and um, sort of sustain sustainable locations such as this really should be where the higher density accommodation goes. And to summarise, there's no objections uh, and your, your officers have recommended approval and we respectfully request that you follow that. Thank you for your time. Just knock off the mic. I will do. Thanks. I think it's good to go to the floor now. Just one question for me then. The public space, where is the 106 agreement for? Uh, it, that has not been agreed yet. It, you'll you'll see as per the recommendation, uh, mm -hmm. if members are mindful to support the application, that would be something that I would um, request uh, delegated powers to the assistant director so that we can negotiate the uh, section 106. I understand there is open space within about 80 metres of the site. I accept there isn't any adjacent. And like I said, uh, in offices, recommend, the recommendation is finely balanced. And this is one of the key concerns in that uh, uh, the open space to the rear represents an average of six square meters per bedroom. When when you weigh up with uh, new build development, this is a new build development for 20 units on for 20 dwellings or more, you'd you'd expect 30 square meters per bedroom. So there there is a considerable under provision here on site. Uh, the Mem the, the member of the public who spoke raised concerns about uh, amenity. Uh, the, the site does provide provision for cycle storage, waste bin storage, and uh, there are car parking to the side, which is the current arrangements, but uh, there's no room, more room there than for up to five cars. Okay. Thank you for that. What a lot is the floor. Jeff, you've indicated. Yes, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I've, I've studied this, that as I represent a market town, and this is a market town, um, I gather the problems, or perceived problems, is going to be parking. Um, you've got five spaces which are used by office workers during office hours. This would mean um, residents parking 24 hours a day, and I just don't see that that is going to be possible within, within that area to cover 32 residents. And, and we have the same problems in Ellesmere. The car parks are full. You can't just say there's a car park, go and park in it. So I don't believe parking is 
is acceptable. The lay-bys outside are only 40 minutes, so if a resident or a visitor does want to park there, they are never going to be able to sit down. They're going to be up and down, up and down, moving their cars if they've got one. So I, I think parking is a major issue. I don't like the idea um, of um, the bin store, where, where you're going to pick up rubbish from and so on and so forth. And I think that's another issue where bin lorries is put in and park because they're going to be parking in those bays. I know the area fairly well. And I, don't, I just don't think it's right. I, in my opinion, I think the scale, the density, overdevelopment, is overcrowding, insufficient parking, and I just don't think it's acceptable. And I, I, would, I would like to propose that we, we refuse this and actually go against the officer's recommendation. I'll just pull that in the for a second, right? Thank you. Philip just wants to come back on you straight away then. Right, now, I just wanted to point out about the car parking spaces. There's five car parking spaces proposed for residents of the building. I also need to point out on the opposite side of the road to the site, there is a car park. However, I, I actually visited the site myself last Wednesday and uh, I did note that there was a charge of £2 per day on the, on, on, on the car park. Generally full. And uh, therefore, the parking on site will be for residents uh, to use, but you are quite right in that it's, it's only five. Thank you, Philip. Right, uh, Mike. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, um, I would like to second Councillor Elner's uh, recommendation to refuse permission. Uh, I, I just can't support this. I think it is in the wrong place. Uh, I can't say uh, say it any better than the people who've already spoken, really. But the the density intensification of the of of the uh, proposal in an already densely populated part of the town where, uh, as Councillor Kerr highlighted, there is already um, strong uh, tendency towards deprivation and crime, and this will lead to a, a, a greater fear of crime, um, regardless of, 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 of who's, who's, who's living there. Um, I appreciate that we need affordable accommodation. I appreciate that it's a finely balanced decision and um, you know, I, I don't I don't blame officers for um, their recommendations on this, but anyone who, who knows the, the area really well, um, who, who lives around there, I think would <clears throat> would have to argue with them and say that actually no, that, that the harms do outweigh the benefits, although there are benefits. Um, benefits that could be achieved with a, a, a much lower intensity of development. Um, so yeah, I, I would just like to second the proposal to uh, to deny the permission. Jeff, are you quite happy to take on some of the points that Mike brought forward? Yes, I am, Jim. They're very um, they're very sensitive points. Thank you. Did you get those, Ken? Yeah, on the table. Yeah, we got yeah. somebody else going to speak first. Oh yeah, yeah, we got most people. My excellent conservative for me too. Hey. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, um, I support all the comments that have been made so far, and I'm very um, I'm happy about this application. The thing I want to concentrate on is this idea that we should agree to a planning application where, because it has enhancement to open space. You know, I dislike that. You know, if we're talking about providing proper open space for people to be used and to 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 be effective, then we have to have extra open space, not enhanced open space. And I do th think this idea, we, we should jettison this idea of enhancement of open space, and I think we should concentrate much more on additional open space. And I think that's one of the factors which makes me feel that this, this particular development is inappropriate, and we should be looking, as some objections have suggested, at, you know, suggesting to developers they look at reducing the number of people who are going to be housed here and providing a more, a more amenable um, uh, development. Thanks. Thanks, Chair. Um, I have to say, I was the councillor of Old Street West for 12 years. Um, I've done a significant amount of work both with the Cambrian Health Centre and with Railway over the last 10 years. Um, I also chaired the Old Street Alcohol Community Partnership and a number of other liaisons with the police, and I can fully support what's being said. I'm afraid um, about the police. However, we are a planning committee um, and 
we have to look at, at bricks and mortar and use, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that said, I think this is too many. I, I don't think that the um, shoes belonging box is not people. And I think that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at a number of boxes for, for people to stay in. It might well be um, uh, welcomed uh, in parts of Chester or perhaps even Shrewsbury. I don't mean that in a horrible way where there is a significant student population. Um, but there isn't in Oswald Street. Um, and the, um, the need, I'm afraid, I believe, for, for this sort of um, accommodation is, is simply not there. There are issues uh, in the area, as there are in most market towns, also she's not unique, um, with, with um, substance abuse. Um, and um, I, I do remember spending nine months working with council officers and the police on, on, on uh, ways forward to redevelop our, our services in that area. And it was piloted in Nonsel Street. It was piloted in Nonsel Street because that seemed to be the, the logical place to do it. Um, I note that um, it is on a knife edge. Uh, the core strategy CS6 requires development, and I quote, protect, restore, conserve, enhance the natural and built historic environment. Um, I don't believe that this will, uh, res well, will restore, conserve or enhance um, that environment, frankly. I, th I think, I think, you know, I think these things are subjective. Um, and I understand why the officers come down on on off that off that tightrope on one side, um, but I'm afraid I'm on the other side. Um, I also don't think it complies with um, CS11 in 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 the, in the sense that the officer has agreed that you know, in theory, I guess that it contributes to the health and well-being of communities. It it doesn't in no way, shape, or form will this will this, in my opinion, comply with CS11. It it just simply doesn't. I don't think there is um, sufficient amenity space. Yes, it's all right to say there's plenty of amenity, amenity space in the Cambrian Park, but that means crossing a road. Um, and there is a crossing up by the former Morrisons, um, but it's not the sort of crossing that I would let my younger children do. Um, if it's raining, if it's horrible, if somebody just wants to pop out for a, for a smoke or just a breath of fresh air, I think the, the, um, the bins being so close um, would be certainly off-putting for that. I don't think there is enough car parking. Uh, yes, it's a sustainable location, and we have heard um, you know, somebody say that, um, you know, that, that this would be supported if it was smaller, um, not smaller in size, but smaller in density. Um, and I'll go back to my shoes in, in boxes. So I don't think this is... I do think it's probably the right use for that building, um, but I don't think this is this is the the right design. I think the design's been put in really to maximise um, profit rather than maximise the quality of lives for the people that live in it. And I can't support this in any way, shape, or form. So I will be voting against it. I'd like to bring your mic towards yourself a bit, please. We're, we're, we're sharing at the moment. We're not just with the sector issue. Is that okay? That's good. Have you got me? Yeah. Sorry, I'll only be a second. Um, I'm not familiar with uh, uh, the Austria era, really. Uh, although I was born there, I, 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 some would say, sensibly left three months later. <laughs> left three so months. Disagree. Left three months later. Yeah, thrown that word. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I looked around and thought I'm going. Um, <laughs> The, the, I'm, I'm comfortable with it, with this for the same reasons that have been expressed by the other members. It's far too intense uh, uh, a development. It is looking to maximise space with little thought for the the future uh, occupants of the property. So I'm I'm minded to support all the objections. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I won't take much time. I, 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 as uh, Councillor Elmer and I share a market town uh, understanding. We had an application in, in WEM, and uh, it was, in our opinion, as a town council, too intensive. We said no, they reduced it. Uh, we were inclined because we needed the development and the economic renewal in the town to accept it. Planning officers said no, it's got to appeal now. Uh, 
this is clearly worse than the one that we're talking about in my hometown. And uh, so I, I would say this is definitely not, a, not uh, appropriate. And I felt that almost from the very first words that were spoken by Judith Williams, very helpfully so. Um, could I just ask uh, you, Philip, what is, you said about floor areas. I mean, we've talked about everything else, but these floor areas, I've got a son that's just gone into student accommodation. It's, it is a box. It's, it's, it is, there's no other word for it. Um, what are the floor areas that, it says minimum accepted here on the no, no, uh, national standards, but what, do these increase much over national standards, these floor areas in these places? This is a matter I raised last week uh, as a result of the external space, because uh, as I pointed out, officers agree this is finely balanced. Uh, we looked into it with our housing team and they've got no issues with regards internal space. I cannot comment here now whether it, it, it uh, meets minimum or what, but uh, they clearly raised no objections to the internal layout. Thank you for that, because I, that just adds to my activity. We should not accept this. Uh, I think the suggestion of uh, the, the use of the building is, is probably acceptable in multiple locations, but six dwellings may be giving space for people to live in properly, acceptable, takes the need down for parking, reducing the number of bins. It's win win by taking down the intensity, so I will, I will vote against this. Thank you, Andrew. Philip, would like to come back to any points? <laughs> Uh, no, uh, I, as the presentation clearly pointed out, this is a finely balanced application. I accept members uh, of take the balance the other uh, two are against the officer recommendation. That is their prerogative, and uh, I, I accept what I would be interested now to hear, uh, in conjunction with the solicitor, what your reason for refusal is going to be. Before I come to any further, please. I was coming to that now. You've had se several voices here, mm -hmm. different reasons. Could we collect all those together, please? So, you propose, yeah. Jeff, could you sort of collate some of those together? So yeah, I, I, I started by it. saying it, it, the, the density, the scale, it's overdeveloped and overcrowded and insufficient parking, um, property health and safety um, issues for local residents. We're told it's overlooking. I, I, I can't comment on that because I don't know. Um, the problem for me is parking and the refuse collection and storage and so on, because that is going to be a is going to be a problem. Overdevelopment, you could say. Overdevelopment, yes. Which is yeah, it was never mentioned. The word overdevelopment wasn't mentioned. Oh, I did. Overdevelopment. Yes. <coughs> I mentioned the word scale density, overdevelopment, overdevelopment. Okay. 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 Yeah, I think the, the the lack of outdoor amenity space as well. I mean, you know, it's it's set there in policies, isn't it? It's accepted that it's inadequate, and so I think that can be given as a reason as well. Um, and also, uh, I don't know if, if something around um, the lack of provision for drying of clothes. Um, you know, that's stipulated in policy as well. Um, but there's there's no external space for drying clothes. There's no internal space for drying clothes. It, it, you know, they'll be just you know in in, in very small areas of living, living accommodation, people are going to have to be uh, drying clothes, which could lead, lead to damp and, and, and health issues. So I think that's another another point. Good point. Vince, Well, I, I, I did mention in, in my um, spiel that I don't believe it complies with CS6 or CS11, and the object, it, objectives of CS11, if the proposer is willing to take those on board, I'm sure yes. people would be appreciative. All those can. So, Jeff, happy with all that? Yes, very happy with that. Yeah. I've actually made some notes, and I wait to hear what you say. Uh, I think uh, you you have sufficient grounds to refuse this if, you, if that's what you wish. On overdevelopment of the site, insufficient open space, and car parking facilities on site for occupants, car parking, and in consideration of deliveries to the site. And therefore, uh, you, you could argue this is contrary to policies at CS6 and MD2 of the SAMDEV. Uh, I'm not, I haven't looked at policy CS11, which is affordable housing. Uh, I'm interested to hear what's points in that policy, because it doesn't comply with. 
Um, I think I think CS11 uh, should contribute to the health and well-being of communities, including safeguarding residential and local amenity. And it doesn't. <coughs> Put bluntly. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay with that? Yeah. Okay. People have to have a long call vote, will we? Captain Allen is happy to include on. Oh, yeah, you're quite happy yes, to as well. I'm, I'm happy <coughs> with um, those policies and, and the reasons for refusal. Thank you. Um, you okay. We'd better do roll, roll call one on this, please. Okay. Um, so if you can indicate whether you're for or against the um, reasons for refusal, which we've just listed out. Um, Gary Burchett? For the reasons for refusal. Jeff Elner. For refusal. Ted Clark. For refusal. Nat Green. For the refusal. Vince Hunt. For refusal. Mark Jones. For. Mike Isherwood. For. Edward Towers. For. David Vasma. For refusal. And Paul Wynn. For. Okay, no, thank you very much. Uh, to be refused, so we should move on to the next slide. Steve, Steve, do you want to move your position there? Yeah. Did you say, do we want him to move? They collected the... Um, yeah, that's what we I can say something brief. Shuffle to the back. Just wait for Ellie to come back. Just trying to put the lights on. Thanks. 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 John's uh, leading on this. Thank you, John. Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, just put your speaking foot towards you a bit, please, John. Thank you. Yes, this is that dedication um, <coughs> at Auckland Farm School in Glebe Road, based on Hill, for the demolition of existing school building and the erection of 23 residential dwellings, formation of access from Glebe Road. Both um, paths, cycleways, and public open space. Um, I'd just like to direct members' attention to the update sheet. Just one update on this application. Um, Applicate condition 19 has been George picked. Um, condition 19 has been amended so that um, the details of the footpaths and cycle paths to serve the access as it, um, the site as it as it meets um, Life Hill Road will be submitted to the um, the LPA prior to the occupation of the dwellings. This is just to give the um, the LPA more certainty on the uh, safe accessibility for best pedestrians and um, cyclists into the access site. Um, the application is brought to committee as the the land is on my um, structure council. Um, the application was brought to committee last month on the 8th of November it was deferred. Reasons for deferral were um, to allow further negotiation with Sport England regarding payments for local pitch improvements and also to allow the developer to provide a bat survey in relation to the um, loss of tree T28. Um, I'll direct members now to look at the, um, the update reports, which um, details the fact that these um, matters that were deferred are now um, being overcome. Um, the the developers now agreed to pay the 75,000 that was requested by Sport England, and that was also agreed by I am our leisure officer. Um, a bat survey has also been done on that, that one tree, and no bats have been found on that tree. And therefore, the objections of Sport England and the leisure officer have been um, withdrawn. Um, 
Other matters, other, other matters since the previous um, committee are the um, just to clarify the, the affordable homes on this site will remain um, two. The provision as agreed by affordable homes team will be 1.8, so that is a small over provision. The developer is still committed to providing an additional two on top of that, um, coming from um, Homes England grant funding. Um, but that could never be secured by a legal agreement. Um, that was the case last time, and the way the case now. Um, so that should not really be given um, any significant weight. Um, other matters to do um, drainage. Um, the developers confirmed with Seven Trends that the connections um, um, provide further information, information demonstrating that Seven Trends will will accept the connections from the development to their existing assets. Um, and that a new development is to be offered for adoption. As such, uh, condition um, 14 has been amended as could be seen in the um, update report. Um, now come to slides. Um, this is the location plan. In the hatch area, it shows the site course, um, you see the school. Um, this is Cleve Road here. This is like Hill Road um, here. Yeah, it's <coughs> Lith, 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 sorry, Lith, Lith, sorry to. Lith, Lith. But I um, challenge Mr. Molyneux previously about um, Christchurch here, and you've got the Basin Hill playing fields here. Um, not, the, the development site, this is the proposed site plan, 23 dwellings. Um, you can see <coughs> uh, the majority of um, the properties are to the, the southern side of the access road in. You've got two main principal um, open space areas to the centre, either side of the road. And you've got a footpath uh, connection here, which will lead through to Lyth Hill Road. Sorry. Lyth, 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 sorry, Lyth. I'll get right, right. Lyth Hill Road. Um, the main access, free access, is onto Glee Road here. Um, so this, these are um, 3D images of the, of the proposed developments. You can see the open space here at the centre of the site. You can see the design of the dwellings, offers a comfortable with the design, leave the there's open frontages, there's variation in the in the detailing. Um, um, and also landscaping will play upon a feature in the overall layout which is supported. This is a street scene image and again the massing is broken off. There's variation. Um, parking is to the side where, where possible. Um, This is closer. This is an um, indication of the, um, the elevations themselves. It's plots to one to four. Um, obviously, not going to show you every single plot, but this is sort of an indication of the design that we're looking at. Um, we've got car pots to the sides, um, and then there's also going to be a uh, two bungalows delivered on the site. Um, and this, this is an indication of the design of the bungalows. It's a photograph of the site as it is at the moment. This is up on primary school. Um, it's a brownfield site. It's been not used for approximately 12 years now. Um, and it's subject to <coughs> further decay and vandalism misuse. And this is the site um, view from Bleak Road. This is roughly where the access we're going to. Um, in terms of the overall principle of the development, officers um, do recommend approval. It's a brownfield site. It has not been developed for um, since it's been 12 years. Um, the, the overall design is, re is recognised as, as a good quality. Um, that landscaping is set centrally within, within, within the site layout. Um, <coughs> okay, okay. The application is recommended for approval. Um, it will be considered in principle because it constitutes a sustainable form of development enabled to reuse of a brownfield site. It um, would bolster that the local housing stock generates an open provision of much needed affordable housing for the village and create accessible public open space. The layout is well designed with open frontages and parking that will be well integrated and not predominant. While the design of the dwellings provides visual interest. Um, most trees will be retained and some of the landscaping plants indicate significant additional planting throughout. Um, 
Yes, so the application is therefore recommends validated approval subject to the agreement of um, Memorandum of understanding between the developer and Josh Council to secure public open space, two affordable homes, and a payment to look pitch improvements and all changing room improvements and all play agreed sites and the conditions set out in appendix one attached to the original committee report and any amendments to these conditions as considered necessary by the assistant director. Thank you, John. We uh, we have three speakers on this item. So we'd like to kick off with a local member, Ted Clark. You have five minutes, Ted. I'm sure you, well, you have gone for 30 second warning now. No, no, <laughs> no indeed. It took me less than five minutes to leave Morris Street. Yeah. Just to repeat what I said last time, really, it's that, that most of the population in base, and I'm just really relieved to see uh, this finally progressing. It has been over 10 years of deliberation um, uh, and prevarication without getting anywhere. It, it is a great relief to see it going forward. I think everybody will agree. Personally, I like the site layout. It's quite, it's very thoughtful. And the mix of housing types is to be commended. We haven't just gone for the ubiquitous four-bed executive detached, which would lend itself in some of these places. The one thing I regret is that, that during the discussions that have gone on over the last 10 years, sadly, the plans for a new library com community hub um, have uh, uh, sadly disappeared. But uh, there we go. I, so I support the application for the reason that come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. I'll go to the back. I'll step, okay. I'll step to the back. Spend my life doing that. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a second. I'm sorry, man. Allow me to fall over. Be careful. Excuse me. Only the is he going to talk the whole way? Let me carry it. All around again, though, you've been. This is this is true. You sat in the chair. You're right. Got to speak against Mr. Christopher. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's exactly what was asked for. Let's speak here. Yeah. No, next. That's the memory. Oh, sorry, I've jumped. Oh, you can tell that. Sorry, I apologise. Okay, sir. So we're going to come to the floor. Mark. Yeah, I like this project. I liked it last month. I think we should pass it last month myself. But um, oh, it now. the uh, objections have been over overcome that we want. So um can all be a good ice builder and it'd be lovely to see the site uh, leveled and used for good purpose. So uh, I, I recommend that we go with the officer's recommendation and get pass it. Thank you. Vince. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, I, I, like um, Councillor Jones, think that we should have uh, passed this last month. Um, it's, it's nice to see that, that, um, that the needs of, of the naysayers um, have, have been met. Um, I think we need to get on and get this done. I understand that, that it's the, a sum of money for, um, from central government for clearing the site is, is means spades in ground by March of next year. Um, we do have more uh, money now, as was requested from members last month, to um, to meet the um, playing field need. But but we've also lost a little bit on the um, on the affordable housing. So um, it is what it is. It's not much different from last month. I'm glad the bat survey's in now because yeah, that was in danger of driving me batty. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to support this, um, as I would have done last month. Um, thank you. Matt. Thank you, Chair. Well, um, I too will be supporting this application, um, although with slightly differing um, uh, sentiments on this, as uh, I'm very pleased to see that the uh, contribution to uh, uh, recommended by Sport England has actually now been met in full, and it shouldn't. This shouldn't have been uh, a problem in the first place, but uh, clearly for some reason it was. But now this local difficulty has been overcome. So yes, I'll be supporting this application. In fact, uh, I wonder if I, I'll, I shall if I can move the officer's recommendation. Already done. Already done. Yeah. I'll second it. Then. I'll second it. 
so we have uh, I think that's still on my finger. Um, yeah, for different sentiments to the previous two speakers, I would I think this delay was was probably had to be. The fact that seventy five thousand is now there, um, that's good. And could I be a great house builder? So I, I would support this application. Thank you very much. There's nobody else indicating. I think we'll have to go for a roll call yeah. once again, please, Ken. Okay, um, so if you can indicate whether you're for or against the recommendation to grant permission, um, subject to the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding and the, and the 106 Agreement, and to the subjects in Appendix 1, and any amendments to the conditions considered necessary by the Assistant Director. Um, <coughs> Gary Burchett? For. Jeff Elmer? For. Steve Davenport? For. Matt Green? For. Vince Hunt? For. Mark Jones? For. Mike Isherwood? For. Edward Towers? For. David Vasma? For. And the four went? For. Okay, that's unanimous. Yes, thank you very much. So we can move on to item nine now, which is the Five Portal Garden Shoes. Good. Okay, Mr. Chairman, are we ready? Okay, so yeah, sorry, Tim. Oh, I'm not rushing you. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Application proposes a single story extension to provide a new kitchen and, and gym at, and a property known as Five Port Hill Gardens, Shrewsbury. The extension of the rear of the dwelling will, re, will replace in part an existing single story garage and extension, the latter of which has been partly demolished. Members' attention is drawn to the update sheet in that this application is a committee owing to the town council's objection and members calling and the local member calling within 21 days, which were both based on material planning reasons. Uh, as well as the update sheet, uh, I see members have, have had two further letters of objections from neighbours, and uh, these were passed on to me this morning, and uh, I looked through them. And uh, I, was, I appreciate concerns about overdevelopment. Uh, this matter is covered in the officer's report. And I the other further point I'd like to add, but add in the one letter it refers to advertising was not in accordance with planning procedures. I can assure you uh, all advertising in this application met the minimum requirements for advertising of, of planning applications uh, to, to the public with a site notice placed on site and uh, <laughs> application placed on the council's website. I now run through the plans. Site outlined in red, patched in red on the corner of the road there, Portal Gardens. There is a site there with the house, with the house, with the house to, in the center of the site. Uh, proposed extension, uh, sorry, the existing situation with the ex single story extension of the rear party demolished and the single bay garage, and note the dwellings uh, in the neighborhood. This is the application for the, fl the floor area and proposed block plan of the proposal. Uh, the grey, uh, hatched grey in the back, is the proposed extension. Uh, the Site has recently had a double garage erected to the front, uh, where, where you see the car parked in the entrance where the steps up to the property. That, that property is it's on raised ground from the road down below. Uh, this is a, a, a existing elevations. Uh, the garage is not under the house, by the way. It's under the front garden. And this is the proposed elevations. It's a single story extension onto the rear of the dwelling. And that's the proposed floor plan. Finally, some photographs of the site 
Uh, that is the side elevation of the house. The, uh, this is the uh, side where the extension is going on to, and it faces on uh, the side elevation onto the adjoining road, but the entrance to the property is going to be from the front <laughs> elevation. And this is the rear garden in where it's supposed to uh, extend. As well as the Town Council and local member raising concerns, as I've done in paragraph 4.7, of the officer's report, letters of objections have been received from members of the public, as summarised in paragraph 4.8, along with the two additional ones you received this morning. And members' attention is also drawn to conservation officer's advice, as set out in paragraph 4.5 of the report, with regards to overdevelopment. The application proposes a single storey extension onto the rear elevation of the dwelling, with dimensions as outlined in paragraph 6.21 of the report. We shall consider it large in floor area. The dwelling, it is considered, will have sufficient, sufficient open space outside community space as a result of the proposed development. The extension is considered large, albeit single storey. The site, though, is reasonably well screened from surrounding dwellings, as the site is on lower land and the main glimpses of the development will be off the adjacent <coughs> residential service road. Members are reminded that a double garage has been constructed to the front of the property. This is built in, as I said, into the bank and the dwelling stands above it. We shall consider finely balanced in that the development is significant in floor space in relation to the existing dwellings ground floor, floor space. And obviously <laughs> acknowledge concerns about all the development of the site. Each case has to be assessed on its own planning merits in relation to planning policies. In this instance, it is considered that the development is proposed, albeit significant in area, will be well screened <laughs> by the surrounding vegetation and the land topography, representing, as it does, single-storey development. Also material consideration is permitted development rights, which allow an extension onto rear elevation of a dwelling, and in this case, the proposed extension is 2.52 metres <laughs> higher in overall height and exceeds the side elevation of the outer wall by a small margin. In fact, I'll point this out to you now on the plans. <coughs> uh, you'll see the, the extension on the rear here, at grey. Well, it just comes out from the outer wall here. Therefore, that would not be the development because it's outside the building line, the original building line of the existing dwelling. Uh, the recommendation is one of approval subject to conditions, as outlined in Appendix 1, attached to the report. And that concludes my presentation on this application. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Can you just break off this speak? Just go back to photographs again, please. Yeah. Just the building on the right at the top end, the north end of the site. Yes. Is that building going? I'm not sure. No, the, yes, the, yes. The the long, long yes, the, yes, story. Yes, that's existing garage. So I'm not sure if you pointed out that that building is going. Okay. Yeah. Just clarification from Matty. Okay, we have two speakers on this one. Uh, Again, we have Mr. Christopher Matty. You'd like to come forward, please. <coughs> Mr. Matty, you have three minutes. Would you like a thirty-second warning? I would. We want to start and so the button on the right hand side. There's a button on the right hand side of the box. We want to start the clock until we start speaking, okay? <coughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Just just press the button, please. That's it. I'm Christopher Machin. I'm one of those campaigning for Port Hill Gardens to be designated. Um, a protected area. But in this case, I'm speaking against this proposal for <clears throat> this most recent planning application, uh, uh, starting with 222. Two, two. Uh, the committees have received from residents several objections to this revised planning application. The number of supporting comments is few. Just three from Port Hill Garden residents from uh, 80 um, adults. 
the number was increased by separate letters from husband and wife under maiden name, wife's father, stepmother. The outside garage building, which has already been referred to, which was completed about a year ago, deeply upset a number of residents. Many of us have passed by it several times in the day. Um, and each time we pass, um, we re remember that the size of that is in fact um, out of scale in our view. When this most recent application for planning approval was uh, presented, uh, this was seen as a second case of overdevelopment. I come now to Karen Rolfe's uh, contribution. Karen, as you know, is conservation area, <coughs> so conservation officer in the historic environment team. Her comments are gently expressed. So we must be careful about not missing the power behind the <coughs> word she uses. <coughs> Four quotes, not considered to respond particularly well to these important policy considerations. Number two, not particularly appropriate in character or design. Number three, not, Thirty seconds left. not considered to respect the scale or pattern of development. Number four, not sympathetic with the character and contract context. It would be an insult to Karen's professionalism to accept the proposed design without modification. I move now to the human side. I've lived in Port Hill Gardens for 33 years. I'm afraid, Mr. Mason, you've run out of time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeremy. So, right, four, can we have a move to one, please? Alan, you have three minutes. We've got your 30-second warning. Yeah, correct. Um, yes, please. Okay, no problem. Uh, you just press it again. Wait, which button? Well, right, 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 right. And then the timer starts. No, as soon as you start, the screen starts. starts. That's it. Okay. Right, so. okay. So I'd like to thank the planners for their well-considered report and their recommendation that permission is granted. All I would add to that is that since the initial objections were made on the portal, far more comments of support have been received. Also, I would add that the Town Council reversed their initial objection. On the point of objections, I must respectfully point out that the comments just made are a minority view and are not representative of most local residents. Only six <laughs> out of 19 comments on the portal are objections. Furthermore, the objection comments contain a number of misunderstandings about the plans. The negative comments are subjective, opinion-based, and not from qualified architects, structural engineers, or surveyors, and have not considered any of the unique challenges of the plot, for example, being on a hill or the need for retaining walls. There seems to be a real animosity about the previous front garage development from this small handful of residents, which is irrelevant to the reconfiguration of the outbuildings at the back of the house. I'll try to address the three reasons the application has been brought to this meeting by Councillor Julian Dean, which overlap with the objections just made and on the portal. Reason one, scale. We have actually reduced the size um, that has just been shown in discussion with the planners. There's already precedent for comparable and even more significant developments on Port Hill Gardens already. For example, the extension at number 25, the two-storey development at number nine, and the substantial new building between 52 and 50, just to name a few. Regarding our plans, the biggest increase in scale was the previous kitchen design, which was approved without any issues raised at all. Scale was not even mentioned as a consideration. The rear garage or reorientation would lead to only a marginal increase in scale. We would make much better use of the corner plots and also address the safety concerns of number seven, which I'll discuss in a moment. Uh, being set into a tall bank and screened by a new hedge enclosing the rear garden, the modest increase in scale will not be apparent to immediate neighbours or from the road. Reason two, arts and crafts heritage area. Our plans are for a sympathetic redevelopment, matching original features of the house and reusing original materials. 
I should add that Port Hill Gardens is characterised by arts and craft and Edwardian style, but it is not a heritage area. I've lived on the road for 30 years and never heard this definition or seen it raised on any previous planning applications on the road. Reason three, risk to number seven. Unfortunately, we have discovered that this is already an issue as number seven is uphill of our plot and the existing outbuildings do not meet modern standards for retaining walls. This is one of the main issues we are trying to address with our proposals. If the plans are blocked, I'd like to know who would be liable if anything happens to the current garage walls and the land on number seven is damaged. Surely it's better to allow plans which address this issue and which have been designed by a qualified engineer. Finally, supporters of the plans have commented that they feel the plans will improve the current site, that the old houses that characterise our beautiful road are in need of development and that the closing off of the rear garden will improve urgency, amenity value and the development will not be visible anyway. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so Philip, would like to come back on any of those points? Uh, yes, I think I've uh, heard. Right, uh, I think I need to bring your attention to the update sheet on this because Shufi Town Council did initially object it. They've come back in uh, saying, uh, and I'll read it out to you, the Town Council responded indicating they were happy to remove their original objection to, the app to this application on the new information, provided that the removal was subject to comments from the Conservation Officer who had not commented since new information has been submitted. She has not further commented on this application because it is, I, as I understand it, and I think you need to read, you need to read carefully, uh, the conservation comments, conservation officer comments is set out in paragraph 4.5, in that the dwelling is not inside a conservation area. Port Hill Garden is north of and outside of the northerly boundary of the Shrewsbury Conservation Area. And, I, and we are aware that this is of local interest to include in portal gardens within a conservation area designation. So it, it, it isn't with actually currently within, uh, within the conservation area. Nevertheless, officers do appreciate that the extension of the rear, as that plan shows, is large in footprint. However, it is a, it is a single story story. Uh, extension onto the rear. I've explained to you the situation with permitted development rights and officers remain of the opinion that visually it will not have any significant harm uh, owing to the land topography and the, the surrounding plantings. And further still, as you can see from that plan, uh, the property will continue to have what is considered an acceptable amount of open space. Thank you. Thank you. So, number to the floor, Steve has indicated. Just comment, really, uh, on the, the, the first speaker. Uh, again, I've been on this committee for 15 odd years. And uh, if the conservation officer speaks, the planning officer is usually God has spoken. So, I'm, I'm really would like to know more about conservation, your thoughts on their comments, planning officers. Can I just add to that? Go on, Mark. Um, what is happening with the... Um, Use your mic, please. What is happening? Is that being closed up on the left-hand side <laughs> where there's a drive now? That's being uh, hedge or is it? If you can answer that as well. Right? I'm just going to go to... Yeah, 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 that's the whole purpose, is to close off the rear garden, increase the hedging, and turn that back to garden from the driveway. Thank you. Right. Yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly one topic I wanted to bring to your attention. Uh, there has been, a, as I said earlier in my presentation, there's a new double garage being erected in the front. I think that plan shows it very well with the car parking space. Uh, the, where the car is parked inside, the garage is alongside. Uh, therefore, it is not uh, under the house, as the photograph would indicate. It's there where I'm pointing now. And then there's a car there. This site here, as you can see, is, in, is existing access. However, it is proposed to close this off with hedging, and therefore that is the main visual view you'll have inside. Well, when that hedge is planted and grown up, uh, uh, impacts are going to be minimal. Uh, it's on lower ground than the two dwellings here that are, are the nearest. And uh, I hear what the council said about the conservation officer's comments, hence just beforehand, I, I wanted to bring that to your attention because the conservation officer has raised concerns. 
However, she did not read comment because of the fact that it's not within the conservation area, and therefore uh, there was no real remit for her to uh, to make further comment on this application. She made it what she her views are, are quite clear. And Whistle, I do partly agree with, with her what she's saying because there's no question the floor the floor area of that of that extension is well bigger than the existing house. Mm -hmm. However, it's single story. And you've got to take into consideration what is permitted development would allow, permitted development, permitted development rights would allow. Because at the end of the day, that's not the side elevation of the house, it is the rear. Thank you. Okay, Ted. Uh, yeah, thank you. If I may, given the, the, the issues relating to this, I, I'm, I'm mindful was of the conservation officer that they tend to be generally overlooked and I, I, that does cause me some concerns but primarily I'd, not, I'd like to say if I may be in mischievous this certainly lends itself to a, a site visit and it's a great pity that we're doing so few of them um, these days I, I would have much I think benefited from, from the opportunity to visit the site with the other committee members and the officer. Thank you for all your comments, Ed. Let's see what it is. It was noted this morning, but there you go. As we're going on, Vince. Thank you. Yeah, I, was, I was a little bit con confused um, by the um, conservation officer's comments because, as has been pointed out, it's outside the conservation area, so I somewhat rather suspect it was a bit of a mistake that that perhaps you commented in the first place on the original application, because um, it wouldn't be normal, I don't think, for the, mm. for the conservation officer to, to, to comment on on every part of Shropshire. I think they tend to stick more to, to the areas that, that they have some concern in. Um, I think we're perhaps a little bit, in a way, in danger of overthinking this a little bit, because, you know, the bottom line is, and it has been pointed out, um, is, is that um, Actually, if this was just a little bit smaller under permitted development, they could just get on and do it. So I'm asking myself if if um, if, if if it were to be refused, um, what an inspector might say. And, and my view is the inspector would say, well, it's only a little bit bigger than they would have had the right to do under permitted development. So I, I don't think truthfully, I mean, these things are always going to be you like them or you don't like them. But at the end of the day, we're here to judge according to policy and 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 take the guidance of our officers. And one of the principal um, reasons for it coming to committee was because of the town council who have now withdrawn their objection. I can't see any reason, I'm afraid, um, not not to go with the officers' recommendations on this. So I'm going to move that, that we go with the officers' recommendations. Um, I, I don't think, to be honest, we've got a lot of choice because I think if the inspector got involved in this, the inspector would look at it and say, what are you doing? You'd kick out the appeal, wouldn't you? Yeah. Thank you. Come on. yeah, me and the chairman did actually go and have a bit of a drive-by this morning, um, <laughs> and uh, which, <laughs> which, 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 <laughs> which is nothing stopping any other member of the council doing that. We didn't actually go on the gentleman's property, although what I'd like to. Um, it looked a very nice property, and... Um, we, if there had been a site visit, I don't think we'd be discussing this now. I think we'd just pass it straight away. I, I can't see a problem with this. Um, I do hope he does it in a decent style, as the Edwardians did. Yes. I must admit, he's put a garage at the front, which doesn't quite fit in, which has probably caused some of the the, the comments Thank from you. the neighbours. Um, but that's nothing to do with this. Um, so yeah, I, I would second. Uh, I think it was uh, yes. Vincent. Um, he said we should approve it. And I'm happy to approve it. Thank you. Uh, Jack. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Mark stole my thunder. I was going to uh, recommend uh, a second the proposal on the grounds that uh, Councillor Hunt came up with. You know, we're here as a committee to judge applications on planning conditions, not on objections because of <laughs> other people not liking things. Thank you. Matt. Thank you. Um, well, there uh, have been a few comments banded around about the Town Council planning committee, so but I think we will actually add to that. Um, the Town Council is quite entitled to make its objections 
uh, and uh, and they were given initially on the grounds of, on, on for planning reasons due to uh, the size and massing. The applicant then did come back with changed plans, and uh, we agreed that the the uh, because of the reduce in the massing that uh, we would do, we would remove our objection. Uh, and also, the local member is quite entitled to uh, raise an objection should he wish on uh, on the initial planning grounds. So um, I don't think uh, there, there was any problem in, in the way that we handled this out. End, uh, and um, I'm now happy that uh, this this application should go forward. So thank you very much. Thank you, David. Yeah, I'm um, also a member of the Shrewsbury Town Council Planning Committee and have dispensation as far as this is concerned. Um, but um, at all I'd point out, I support what um, Councillor Green has just said. But all the other thing I would like to say is that if you do, if you know this area as I do, there have been a lot of developments on some of these properties, and I think it would. I, I don't think we justified in rejecting this one. I think uh, it's, it's it's a reasonable application. I think we should support. Thank you. I'll just make a comment. Chair, Chair, if, if, like, if, if I may, just just to um, for councillors Green and Basmer, I was in no way implying <laughs> that that in some way Shrewsbury <laughs> Town Council's planning committee or anybody else oh, yes, um, sure weren't yeah, entitled yeah. to put oh, their yeah. views <laughs> on. In, in fact, that's having been vice chair for four years, as you know, Paul. Um, I, I welcome and support that, especially for valid reasons. Um, so but there was no, if, if there was a, a taken inference, it wasn't intended. Thank you, Vincent. Now, going back to Ted's point, I'd like to say we did have a drive past today, uh, the vice chair myself. I think it's very interesting that the topography of the ground, it does sit lower. You can't really see it from the photograph, but the hedge behind <coughs> it is, is, will be higher than the actual roof I mean, level. So but it, the topography, that lies lower than the surrounding houses, which you can't really pick up from the photograph. But I understand what Ted's saying. I thought a site visit might be right, but the feeling of the room, maybe we don't need a site visit. So what you're uh, saying, Mr Chair, is we should have more site visits? You no, know, I'm saying we decided not to have it, but... Uh, you did have a drive past, and you'll have to take Marcus and my word for it. Mm. Anyway, I think we've discussed it. I think we've got to feel the room. I think we're ready to move to a vote. So if you could have a roll call vote, please. OK, if you can ind indicate whether you're voting for or against the officer's recommendation. Um, Gary Burchett? For. Jeff Elner? For. Ted Clark? Against. Steve Davenport? For. Matt Green? Four. Vince Hunt. Four. Mark Jones. Four. Mike Isherwood. Four. Edward Towers. Uh, four. Uh, David Basma. Four. And Paul Wind. Four. That's ten four one against. Ten four one against. So that is approved. So now we shall move on to the next application, which is item ten. Which is paid just outside 17 Willow Street, Oswald Street. Are <coughs> you doing this one first? Yeah. Right, thank you, Mr. Chair. This application proposes installation of one BT Street hub in corporate said baggage LCD advert screen plus the removal of BT kiosks on pavements alongside Willow Street, Oz Street. The site is located within the Oz Street conservation area. The application is brought to committee as the ap application refers to development on council mm -hmm. land and the development is not in accordance with the council's statutory functions. Uh, Members' attention is drawn to the update sheet of paragraph 6.214 of the officer's report, where there was an error in it, 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 it referred to Shrewsbury when it should indeed refer to Oswald Street. Uh, I'll now run through the slides. <coughs> yeah, good. Being still looking at the last one. Sorry about that. <coughs> and now, there it is, pavement outside 17 Willow Street, Oswald Street. There is the area hatched in red. Uh, the, the, in, in relationship to the town, it's in, in the heart of the town. It's a beautiful town it is. Have got any opera glasses? Uh, existing site plan, post plan. Uh, there's a, a 
existing and proposed elevations. That gives you the size of the hub. There, and the kiosk at the top, isn't it? Yeah, it's kiosk there. And, yeah, there, and there's a site there outside uh, a, a retail shop. I believe well, once upon a time was Palmer Towns Woolworth store. It was. And uh, that is the proposed street hub. Now, this is some photographs of the site. The site is within the setting of uh, listed buildings. There's the, this photograph I'm pointing at now is where the hub will go, where the, the hub will go. And although this photograph isn't the, the best, uh, it's up directly opposite the boar's head, which is a grade two listed building. And then uh, there's another listed building to the side here, which I pointed on now. And then on the opposite side of the um, street is the town's post office. Uh, members will be aware that this is an application for development similar in scale and design to those of the hubs in Shrewsbury presented to committee at its October meeting, uh, which members decided to refuse every one of the applications as presented. The measurements of this one are as outlined in paragraph 1.2 of the officer's report. Members' attention is drawn to paragraph 4.4 of the officer's report and the council's confirmation of officer's objections to the application in that the conservation team considered the development as proposed harmful to the character of the conservation area and surrounding listed buildings. It is noted that Oswald Street Town Council have raised no objections. <laughs> In conclusion, the development will have, obviously, consider a detrimental impact on the character of the surrounding area and will introduce clutter to the street scene, which will have a negative impact on the conservation area and on the setting of nearby listed buildings. And it is considered in light of the conservation officer's comments which I must draw your attention to in how they worded, as long with uh, the, re the report on, on the historic environment, to outweigh the public benefits of the development. As such, the application is considered contrary to the policies as outlined in paragraph 7.1 of the officer's report, and therefore the recommendation is one of refusal in accordance with the refusal reason as outlined at the start of the officer's report. That concludes my presentation on this application, Mr Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Um, we've had three indicators already, so Mike, would you like to kick off? Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, as uh, the committee probably recalls, I'm ambivalent towards these uh, these screens. I, I don't I, I, I don't object to them um, as a sort of blanket policy. I think um, they, they, they do have benefits they can bring. Listed in the in the papers, the the ultra fast Wi-Fi, charging capabilities, free phone calls, you know, all, all these things. I think the community would benefit from. And uh, in in this location, again, I think the damage to the conservation area was done decades ago. Indeed. The buildings in this vicinity, it, it, it's a mixed area. Yes, you've got some listed buildings, but they're not of a particularly um, you know, they're, they're hardly stately homes. And then you've got, you know, some some rather uh, unattractive um, modern modern constructions, uh, which, so in, in this context, I think that allowing something like this, in my opinion, again, it's probably a finely balanced one, the benefits do outweigh the harms. Um, so, Again, uh, that's that's my consistent opinion on these. So I'm, I'm not just I'm not just uh, in favour of them in Shrewsbury and not in Oswald Street. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Uh, Chet. Thank you. Um, I'm contrary to this. I I would like to object to this because although the area is damaged, it's still a nice area. So why make it even worse? Um, I don't see there's much benefit for these. I think they are suffering the pavement side. And I would agree with the other's recommendation to refuse it. I just do not like the size of those screens on a fairly um, constricted pavement. Thank so, you. Clutter, I'd like to propose to object to it. 
Or the motion and recommendation. Yes, please. Okay, Steve. Right, well, a load of tosh. It's absolutely anything with a light in that area is going to brighten the area. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> wonderful. And um, it is, it isn't historic whatsoever. That is, as um, somebody said up there, that went away years ago in that area. So I, I'd like to approve it. So you're seconding it, are you? No, we're approving it. Yeah, we've got one on there, so. Approved. That's approved. Yeah, it's it's on the yeah it was. Yeah, proposing approval. Oh, it makes it complicated. Okay, um, it's. Well, it shouldn't be too complicated. I think the first proposal came from my left side, which was to go with your recommendation. Yeah. So is that a successful view? Don't need to go for the other one, and if it's anyway, I went to. That's well, I know she's yeah. better at her job than I am, so. You second it? Need to submit your second. Yeah. It's any good. Um, listen, I, 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 I disagree. I don't believe a um, few things I want to say on this. Um, two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah, I think the post office and whether spoons are ugly buildings, um, but there are a number of um, um, listed buildings in that area. I don't think. Um, as, as one of the fellow councillors has said, that they become unlisted just because the area doesn't look so nice. They sit in their own vernacular and, and, and they're still, you know, historical and sit within the conservation area, um, which is why the conservation officer, because it's within the conservation area, has commented. I happen to agree with her. Um, and our first speaker did say that, um, you know, that they're ambivalent towards it. I think it was the term used, well, so am I. Um, I'm not dead set against all of them. I treat each one, which is why we're taking them one at a time as an individual application, because that's exactly what they are. Um, and as individual applications, um, I would be prepared to support them um, in, in, in the right place where I, did, I genuinely believe that the benefit that they provided for members of the public outweighed the, the um, damage that they do to the historic surrounding. Uh, in this instance, as, as with Shrewsbury, I don't believe they do. I think that um, ET um, are missing a, a, a little bit of something here. I, I think I think the location is 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 fine, but I think it's actually the scale and design uh, of, of the board itself um, that that's not right, and it doesn't sit well in there. Um, what they're trying to do is, and I understand it, they're a business, they're trying to offset the costs of installing these things and running them uh, by providing quite a large um, advertising space. Um, and, and I think that they need to rethink that when it comes to uh, conservation areas and where they're sitting in historic environments. By all means, if it was if it was in another part of town that wasn't in the conservation area um, and, and wasn't going to cause um, visual damage, then then I would support it. So I don't want anybody thinking for one minute um, that I'm dead set against all of these. Um, it's horses for courses, and this is the wrong horse on the wrong course. Thank you, Chair. Do I second them, Jeff? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Box. Okay, Gary. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to uh, recommend the officer's uh, um, decision as well. The, my, my concern is precedent. And yes, we turn them all down the street. Now yeah, we've got two in Oxford Street, and there's going to be more and more and more coming through. Uh, I'm of the opinion that BT are probably blanket uh, applications for the whole shop ship. So once we start saying yes to one or yes to two, we open the, the, the barn door and, and we'll have no, they'll be able to appeal against all the ones we've refused previously, based on the fact that we've, we've accepted this one on a similar size footpath and a similar location and a similar conservation area. So I'll definitely go with recommending the officer's decision. Thank you. Mark? Um, despite being vice chairman of the planning, um, I disagree with the planners on this one. And uh, Mr. Mullen, you only read out half of the statement by the conservation officer so she wrote or he it says in our view this type of development within a conservation area would be harmful adding visual clutter to the street scene while undermining the setting and appearance of a nearby listed building but he didn't add while this would likely represent less than substantial harm it would nonetheless be harmful so i i think it's I think the the benefits to our townspeople, which is who, who we represent, or our people, I think they'd be happy to have a bit more Wi-Fi. And I don't think 
in the setting that it is, and I think this is an individual one, it doesn't set a precedent at all. It is, it is horses for courses, and I think this horse would happily be in this course. So I'm happy to support the uh, my colleague who said they were going to uh, go against it, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm happy to second Steve. Well, we've already got voted in second. The first one, so we can do it there. Hang on. The other ones, yeah. <clears throat> Ted. Sorry, Joe, I just think it's worth pointing out there is no setting of precedence on within planning on individual applications. Each one has to be taken yeah. in its own context. Yeah. Uh, so, can I back? No, I'd just like to add, I did touch the chairman and say I want to comment on the conservation officer's comments, so you beat me to it. He was very it. gentle, I didn't feel it. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not prepared to, to uh, support the officer's recommendation, but uh, I, I do have to pause for a second and really savour the comments on um, the proposal will have a negative impact on Woolworths. I mean, you know, they're, they're, there's, a, there's something to take home and conjure with, really. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Finally balanced, yes, yeah, sure. Um, I want to be, well, it's uh, yeah, consistent, really. We are talking about conservation areas here, and we do want BT to have a different design for such areas. We do, we aren't against development, we aren't against the, the hub idea and the, or the advantages it will bring, but um, that is not the, the thing here. But BT do need, need to get the message that they need not just one size fits all for the country. Um, so I would, um, on this one, I'll, I'm very finely balanced myself, but I would say probably I will support the officer's recommendation in balance. It is a very fine but I, I was looking to my left, I haven't got any to <laughs> David. <laughs> Thanks, Chair. This is a um, complete quotation that Councillor Jones um, did on, on the cons conservation yes. report. Oh, so stop. Um, <laughs> she did, yes. She, she, um, she went on to say, she said, um, where, while this would like to represent less than substantial harm, it would be harm nonetheless, yes. where great weight needs to be given to the conservation of designated heritage assets. So I think that is quite powerful, and I think that's why we should support the officer's recommendation. Yes. yes. Uh, well, Flip, go no, have your okay. Well, I, I don't need to now. I got you got the last one is just right. highlighted. <laughs> I just <laughs> point to know that out. <laughs> I'd already highlighted it and read it out to you. Sorry, what colours that highlighted pen in front of you? <laughs> oh, it's in their colours. <laughs> <laughs> so... Anybody else wants to speak at the right mic? Yeah, thank you. Um, I just want to re reiterate some, some of the things I said last time, is that you know one of the benefits is the removal of the hideous old phone boxes. Yes. Um, secondly, this protects the sort of universal provision that BT uh, are meant to provide. And we're in danger here that, that Chocky will be sort of left behind with all these leftover disgusting old phone boxes if we don't allow some of these, because... Um, this is this is this is the way forward, and it's hard to see where they would be allowed because most of our town centres have old buildings in them and our conservation areas, and they're not going to want to put them outside of the town centres because you know it's footfall. That's where people are going to want to use them. So if 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 we don't allow them in front of a fairly ugly 1960s 70s building on a on a what because it is a wide pavement actually there it's a very wide section of the pavement um which is where people congregate and could make use of one of these things where are we going to allow them and so Shropshire will just have old phone boxes with broken phones in them um you know smelling a bit and with with gross posters peeling off um and other places will have nice wi-fi free calls you know, these could be a lifesaver to someone stranded in town at night if they've lost their phone or its uh, batteries run out. I just think now and again, we just need to accept something new, even, in, even in the conservation area. Thank you, Steve. Bye. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. Only just to reiterate the part of what I said earlier, I, I have no particular objection to, um, to the right 
provision being put in the right place and uh, they have come up with a one size fits all yeah. and and it doesn't need to be like that and they are maximizing in this instance as they propose to do in shrewsbury the the advertising element to, to garner revenue to do it and in my opinion in historic environs that is not the correct thing to do and i am sure that Shops you won't get left behind by BT, as has been suggested. I think they need to come up with something that's that's more appropriate um, for our historic market towns, not just in Shropshire, but over the whole country. Yes. Thank you. Well, you don't feel left out now or anything now? Okay. <laughs> no, just no, just one, one final <laughs> comment. Sorry. I have another final comment. Well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just, just three minutes, Jim, uh, and Philip. Have we actually gone back to BT after the last rejections and said to them they're too big, make them smaller, and we might approve them? Back to it, have we? Uh, yes, we have tried that. And, and we're probably getting the message now. Right? But, uh, I, I, I've got it. I need to emphasize a couple of points. Can I now? Yes, please. Uh, uh, in, yeah. in response to what I've been hearing, uh, I must make it clear that the, the BT boxes, full boxes removed, are on the opposite side of the street. They're not part of this application site. There'd be nothing to stop them taking the BT boxes away in any, any case. So that wouldn't need permission. Uh, uh, you have to take note of what the conservation officer said. Yeah. And uh, I think the Council Society did raise a very valid point about how it's worded. And uh, in that she, uh, she considers it represents less than substantial harm. So what I'm going to say is, this one is more finely balanced than the ones in Shrewsbury yeah. because of the site. However, nevertheless, it, this site, what, regardless of what you think of it, is a conservation area and it, it will have an impact on the setting of listed buildings within, the, within this area. Uh, we've mentioned one by name, the Boar's Head, and uh, the conservation officer has clearly stated here she considers it will neither preserve or enhance the character or appearance of the area. So, uh, it's a matter of um, scale and size, and uh, I, we haven't heard anything yet positive back about reducing them in scale and size. But uh, I, I wanted to point out today, this is a conservation area. There are listed buildings, albeit you may not think they're as high of standard as some of the uh, settings of listed buildings to the ones in the Shrewsbury area. Okay. Yeah. Mike, did you want to come back for one last comment? Just, just, just quickly, Chair. Um, to actually see um, the main list of buildings, you'd have to have your back to this, so it won't interfere with your viewing of them. But also, um, we, we have to remember that these aren't forever. This is the first generation, so in future, they might be smaller or there might be a new design come along. You know, nothing yeah. is forever. And, and I just think in terms of street scene, you know, it, 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 it's, it's no more detracting from, from the street than a modern road sign or um, anything else. Anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll stop it. Okay, <laughs> One meeting, please. Big. That's right. Okay. Um, well, you can join us if you want, then. We've got a proposal on the table of the uh, officer's recommendation for refusal. So can we have a, not, um, a road call vote, please? So, be interesting. to accept the officer's recommendation for refusal for the reasons set out in the report, if you can please um, indicate if you're voting for or against. Gary Burchett? For. Jeff Elmer? For refusal. Ted Clark? For. Steve Davenport? Not for refusal. Yeah. Against. Max Green? For. Vince Hunt? For. Mark James? Against. Mike Isherwood? Against. Edward Towers? For. David Vasma? For. And Paul Wynn? Against. We've got seven for and four against. Right, well, that's from the office recommendation. Uh, yes, it's been refused. Okay, and the next one, can we just take it as seen? Please, or do we have to be Well, uh, we, I just want to say briefly. Okay, briefly. Right then. The next one on the list is. For advertising consent, uh, it it runs with the with the previous the plans and same slide, so I don't need to run through them again. Consult these responses as per the previous application. Uh, considerations as per the previous application. Obviously, conservation and buildings. 
And thus, the recommendation on this one is also one of refusal. But a reason to that, thank you. Okay, I, I don't think we have to debate this, do we? We take it as we all voted the same way as before. Am yeah. I allowed to do that? Um, yeah, that's the one. Last time, change it. Okay. 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 Go on, Mike. I was just to say that there's no point voting in favour of something that can't happen. So, uh, no. yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I was thinking, but we've yeah. got to go to the motions. Yeah. Can we have a show of hands on this? Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, that should be yeah. a Have a show of hands on this. Order in favour of the office recommendation. Please show. You know. Okay. Thank you. It's protocol. We have to do the motions. Have you got to think? Oh, Steve. Steve. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, okay, I think yeah. Right, we should go with Shoe. Item 12, O2 Shoe Speed. Uh, John. Oh, John, thank you, John. Yeah, thank you. Go back and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes, this application, I think. Um, 12 Oak Street Shrewsbury, an erection of two-story extension and one metre high brick wall for new boundary. Um, there are members to uh, the update sheets and there have been a few updates on this application. Um, a brief summary is that the extension has been brought, um, reduced in width by 0 0.2 metres. There's been a correction to paragraph 6.33 of the committee report. Um, Condition will now be added to any permission granted to ensure all windows at first floor level of northeast elevation will be obscure glazed and retained in that form. There's also been um, a restatement of an objection, which the case officer has assessed and deems that uh, the overall assessment uh, does not change. Um, the application was um, objected to by the town council and was also called in within 21 days by the local member. And there have been a there have been a total of five objections um, for reasons detailed in 4.4, paragraph 4.4 of the report. So this is the location location plan. Um, 12 Oak Street is a detached property on a corner plot where Oak Street and um, London Avenue meet. So it's Oak Street here, and London Avenue on the other side here. This is the plot here. The site is within the Shrewsbury Conservation Area. And this is the block plan of the development. Uh, in blue is the uh, proposed extension. You notice that number 10 is to the north there, um, and property known as Regis is there to the um, west. This is the existing site plan. So that's the existing footprints. Um, <coughs> On the site plan is shown as a garage. That garage is no longer there. The, the, the base is still there. The actual building itself is no longer there. And you can see um, the hedgerow along the boundary with number 10, which is the south on this image. Um, that's the existing vehicle access. And this is the proposed um, air floor plan. <coughs> so you can see um, a small widening of the access. There's going to be permeable paving. Um, for vehicle um, car parking and the, the extension will be this element here and also to the rear so if you want to have a quick look again at the existing um, proposed so elevations existing elevations southeast elevation this is viewed from oak street this will be the front elevation this is the side elevation there's an existing conservatory which will be removed as part of the extension and now the proposed elevation. So you can see again the front elevation here. This is the two story elements set down, hip roof. It's also set back from the front gable. And this is the size which will run along the boundary 10. So it will be set off by from the boundary, which I'll show you um, fair pattern. <laughs> and again, existing elevations. This is now from uh, the side elevation from London Avenue. 
and this will be effectively from the rear. Close again. So this would be again, this is sort of the, the back end of the extension here, and this would be the the side of the um, side elevation of the extension view from London Avenue. This is the host floor, ground floor plan. So features to be looking at here is this essentially what the case is, is where the extension's going. So you saw our staircase, downstairs loop, um, study, and then obviously open plan, kitchen, dining room area. Um, and then upstairs you've got first floor, you've got um, the three windows that refer to in your face sheets, which will be obscure glaze, these three windows here all serve staircase, on, in, bed, in bathroom and en suite. Put conditions there to make sure that, we take, that those windows are retained. Um, and then a few three, 3D images, so you've got existing, the top and then proposed at the bottom. Um, and then again, is it just at the top? Or is it the bottom? <laughs> and then an aerial view. <laughs> so this is the extension here, two story. Um, and there's obviously the access there and the parking area there. It's a photographs. Yeah. Okay. So this is the application factor on the left, and number 10 is on the right. Um, once the once the report and um, it is from conservation area, the scheme when it initially came in was was larger. It was um it would have been an, an additional gable, but match the height of the existing gable. Um, it has now and also would have projected the head of that gable. During the course of the application, it's been reduced in height, it's been set back, and the roof is now a hip roof. Um, the width has also been reduced. Uh, the conservation area officer initially raised some concerns, but with the amendments. Um, does, not, does not object. Um, officers are comfortable with the design, as now shown. Um, we acknowledge there are concerns with the impact on immunity. Um, concerns regarding number 10 have been raised, particularly if it might be difficult to see, there's, there's a small window here to the size of number 10. That saves a kitchen, that's a small gable window. Um, concerns have been raised that this would, the extension would affect the light access to this, this, this room here. Um, the Applicant has submitted an additional sketch here, um, a section which shows the 25 degree angle, which is a test to establish whether the lights would actually be impacted reaching that room or not. Um, on the left, you can see the extension with our hip roof. Then you've got a headroom, which I'll touch on in a moment. And then you've got the kitchen window. You see the 25 degrees just clipping the roof. Our view is that the impact on that light would not be anywhere enough to warrant refusal of this application. Uh, in terms of outlook from this window, it's looking straight into a hedgerow. Uh, if we go back to the photograph again, uh, we've got this hedgerow here, there are obviously a few trees there. We don't believe, though we acknowledge the extension is extensive in terms of length, uh, with the reduction in height, the fact that it's separated from that window in particular by 5.2 metres, um, there will be not enough sufficient impact on light impact, light access, or on overbearing impact to warrant refusal of the application. Um, um, there's a few additional photographs there. So this one again is shown the side with the extension goal, and these other photographs are shown uh, from London Avenue on the corner here, and again from London Avenue there. But the primary photograph to focus on, in my view, is this one here and um, this one here. So overall, the application is recommended for approval, subject to conditions, um, which are recommended at Appendix One at the end of the application report. And the further condition, as stated on the update sheet, related to the obscure glazing to the first floor windows. Um, it's the presentation. Thank you, John. Thank you. Okay, we do have some speakers in this application. Um, we've got one, Malcolm Andrews, like to come forward, please. <clears throat> I'm speaking on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Jones, of the owner occupies of number 10. Street directly adjacent, and uh, for Mrs. Bradford of number 18, so we could submit it on deck. That's fine. Could you just speak to my uh, yep. my on the right hand side? That's the one. You have three minutes, we'd like a 30 second warning. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, I visited my clients again this weekend and to review how the current proposals will be seen from and affect their home and garden. I stood in the kitchen window and looked out for that. 
We firmly believe that the extension will have a substantial detrimental effect on them and the adjoining properties, contrary to your policies CS6 and MD2, which are intended to protect existing residents from oversized proposals. And your emerging policy SP5, high quality design, which says extensions to existing dwellings are to be appropriately sited and proportionate in scale to ensure that they are not overbearing or have an adverse impact on the design, amenity, light and privacy of any neighbouring property. My clients acknowledge the new owner's desire and right to extend number 12, but believe this should be an appropriate size, height and proximity to their boundary, so that it does not impact their daylight, sunlight and amenity currently enjoyed by them in their side kitchen, rear living room and their rear garden. They also acknowledge the size of the extension has been reduced from the original oversized proposals. However, we would ask that you are not swayed just by the fact that changes have been made, but consider that this is a still a very large two-storey extension, virtually doubling the size of the existing house and doubling permitted rights, permitted development rights. You would see from the elevation facing number 10, that has not been reduced in height, it is just the roof that has been lowered. The wall is still four and a half metres high, 15 and a half metres long. That is the height larger than the height and length of an articulated HGV in the garden next door. It also extends beyond the back of both houses by over half the length of their rear gardens to within a few metres of Regis, which is just around the corner in Longton Avenue, which itself had a two-storey extension added onto it last year. So the proposed extension will create a virtually continuous massive building to the south of number 10, obstructing and substantially impacting the sunlight that they currently enjoy, particularly during the winter when the sun is lower in the sky. There is an existing hedge of trees, but the trees lose their leaves in winter, and, in, and all year round you can see between them and through them, whereas the extension will be a solid obstruction all year round, and it will have an overbearing presence on number 10. We note the conservation officer is now happy with the amendment, Proposals. But with regard to neighbours' immunity, we firmly believe these are too large and will have a substantial effect on you. Thank you very much. Okay. Just pop your speaker off, please. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Bless you, Terry. Thank you. Thank you. Can you have a local member here as well? No. No, this is no, Bellevue. This is Bellevue. It's the only area I'm not covering. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Come out the whole shop, right? No, come on, sorry. Your, your name gets about a lot here. So, right, next to speak to local member on um, whatever, and it's Kate Halliday. Kate, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Hello? Oh, yes, we can hear you. Oh, good. Okay, thank you. Um, OK, thanks very much for the uh, chance to speak to uh, today's committee. Um, uh, I fully acknowledge the applicant's right to extend their property, but I think um, that the changes that, that, that have been made, and I'm, you know, I do acknowledge as well that they have made the extension smaller in the plans, in the um, resubmitted plans, um, is changing this from what was an extremely large extension to a very large extension. Um, and as the previous speaker had said, it's it's almost doubling the, the size of the existing house. Um, so I do feel that it is still overdevelopment of the site. Um, uh, I think it would... Um, that the, the rest of the houses are much more mo modest. It's a very attractive part of the conservation area. I think it would impact on the street view of both Oak Street and also London Avenue. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge that there is um, an impact on the, the privacy of neighbouring properties. And I mean, this is going to be a very large um, uh, building right in the in the garden of number 10 I think it would really impact 
on their um, their, their privacy and, and, and light. Um, it would also include the removal of a, an established tree in the conservation area. Um, and I do have concerns about that. We're trying to plant more trees, not, not take them away. Um, and, you know, just to reiterate that, I think um, even though the, um, the adjustment to the proposed roof line um, has been made, the, the, the length and height and therefore overall mass of that side elevation facing number 10 remains the same. It's really large and I think potentially overbearing. Um, and so um, I've, I've maintained my objection to, to, to the resubmitted plans and um, uh, I, I ask that the committee consider this. Thank you, Kate. Thank you for comments. Okay, so would you like to make any comments, John? Yes, I'll come back on a few points. Um, in terms of the privacy, I would say that um, there's conservatory at the moment there that will be removed. Um, we don't believe there's going to be any additional overlooking that already exists. And in addition, we would remove um, rights to, uh, would I say the first floor windows will be obviously obeyed and that will be conditioned. So we don't believe there will be any additional loss of um, privacy between the two properties. In terms of the overshadowing, it later plans with the reduction in the overall scale, uh, with the, as shown by the 25 degree angle um, section. We don't believe there will actually be any direct impact on um, loss, um, the loss of light tool to the, um, the windows number 10. Um, the extension is set off the boundary. I could that, you know, you have side extensions, two stories set up to the boundary. This is set off the boundary. It's actually set off away from number 10 by five meters. That would allow, in terms of the orientation of the sun when it comes around, to the south and the southwest, so to reach the, to the rear guard of number 10, to the point that would not cause a, 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 an effective loss of immunity. So we, we disagree on those points. Um, we also would not concur that it would be an effective doubling of the property say, um, footprint. I mean, on a, on a block plan there, I think it's quite clear it would not be a double link, though I acknowledge it is a large extension. Um, and also in terms of the scale, I suppose not the most important point, but it is within the settlement boundary of Shrewsbury, there's no in principle reason why um, homeowners cannot extend the properties extensively subject to design, which we're com comfortable with and, as a conservation officer, and also impact on immunity, which we believe, as I just laid out, would not be extensive enough to warrant refusal. Okay. I, I, I just want to point out to members uh, that I think this plan shows you it is a large extension, we don't doubt that. However, the, the existing property is set in the middle of the, of the site. You can see the garden area and the parking area it will retain. Uh, not an issue there. Also, please note the proximity of the existing dwelling and the proposed extension to the boundary and that of the uh, neighbouring dwelling. And if members were mindful to support this application and had concerns about overdevelopment, well, they could remove uh, permit PD because they could put extension onto the rear uh, elevation without the need for planning permission, uh, as it's all original, the house, I believe, uh, on this side, is, is, is the only extension it's had is what's going to be replaced by the proposed extension, which also is only marginally coming out from the existing dwelling, as this plan indicates. I think one of the minor points as well, sorry, um, in terms of, I know there's, a, there's trees to be lost, which the, okay. the town council mentioned. Um, I have visited the site, it's a very, it's a junior pear tree in a rear garden. Yeah. It would never be wary of, of TPO or anything of that regard, and it's set well away from the um, the street scene, so has very lim limited visual um, benefits. So uh, we have no concern with that loss of that one tree. Okay. And there wasn't a partridge in it either. I was about to ask that. Thank you, my joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good floor, Vince. Let's pick up. Well, Jim, just just um, just wanted a couple of points of clarification. Actually, um, the uh, first speaker mentioned emerging policy, I believe, SPs. Um, I presume that we are not able to give any weight to those until they until they've been approved. It's the first bit. Just oh, yeah, so one more bit. Um, <laughs> steady. Um, and then the second bit is: it's always been my understanding um, that within planning, there's no right to light. Can that be clarified, please? Thank you, John. Let's just clarify that, please. Um, no, I agree. With, in terms of the first points to reference the major plan, it can only be given limited weight at the moment in time. 
policy CS, CS6 and NT2 of the what Collins has offered plan cover matters in relation to relating to residential immunity. That's what the application is being assessed against. In terms of right to light, um, you are correct. People have this misconception that they, um, they have a right to light, but in terms of making assessments in terms of um, impact on residential immunity, we do have to consider overbear, overbearing, overshadowing, overlooking impacts. Um, if we believe they are extensive enough, we should refuse the application. Uh, in this case, we don't believe that is the case. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Um, I recommend we go with those proposals and we add an uh, amendment that you have suggested that we remove limited development for future uh, uh, building on that, on that plot. Ah, gotcha. Is that possible? Yes, I'd add the condition. Okay. That. We would have no money left. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. Um, Having seen this a number of times now, I still find that this, uh, I think this is excessive in terms of its uh, design. Um, it is a, um, I would say that it's a overdevelopment in the context. And also, I'd, it, as the officer has already said, it's, it's a matter of opinion as to whether the lighting uh, whether the the blocking of the light is acceptable or not, I'm I would still I would argue that it isn't. It is not acceptable. Um, and uh, whereas is, is the officer is quite right in saying that there is a um, that there is a, a, a question of you know you don't you don't have a right to um, a view or to, to light at the same time. You have to be very careful about the blocking of sunlight. That is something that needs to be taken into account. Um, again, I think it's it is it is a fine decision, um, but I, I would still come down and I, I, I I'm not going to support this application. Thank you, Nat. Edward. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> this uh, development, it's first time I've seen it, of course, uh, looks at it. Um, it, it look, <laughs> Steve, if you've got the room, you can't partake. Yeah, we. You can't partake. Okay. Oh, I'll wait. I'll wait. No, I'll wait. You wait, okay. Uh, okay, so it looks good from three sides, possibly. Uh, it's this one side with number 10. Uh, I think Kate is the local mayor. You take her seriously, what she says, because she knows the thing on the ground. It was excessive. It's now very, it's now large. And if you look from the garden and you see this wall, the front of the wall, that tells me it's overbearing. There, there needs to be some break in that wall. There needs to be a further limitation of the design of this application coming forward, I would suggest. And therefore, I would be minded to say to, to refuse this application at this stage, unless somebody can convince me otherwise. Can I just make one comment before I go to Vince? If you look at the site plan again, in the summer, in the summer light, the other one, please. I get into it. Yeah. In the summer evenings, the sun will be coming over the purple bit, so it will be affecting the sunlight on number 10. I just want to point that out. I don't understand. That's where it's going to come in, all right? Anyway, Fitz. You've had a proposal, Chair. I'm happy to second it. Um, I, I do understand the neighbours' concerns. Um, but I don't believe it will be as bad as as the picture that has been painted will, will show. I, I, don't, I don't. It's an extension on a family home, and it's not the doubling of the floor space. And and um, I, I can't really think of any reasons to um, recommend refusal. So I'm going to happily second the proposal from okay. Councillor Bird. Okay. Councillor okay. Birdship proposed it. I'm seconding. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, so we'll take to the vote. I think we have to have a roll call on yes. this one. Okay, um, so if you can indica in indicate whether you're voting for or against the proposal. Um, for the officer recommendation. The off yeah, this is for the officer recommendation. Um, Gary Burchett. For the officer recommendation. Can we just clarify that it is included in the overdevelopment clause? VD. 
Thank you. 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 Thank Technically means what that means. They they can't uh, put yeah. any more development on the site without getting a permit specifically for that. It removes right? permitted and further site permission. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, okay. so yeah. to accept the officer's yeah. recommendation yeah. an additional condition to remove permitted development rights. I just want to make it clear that there's nothing stopping them applying for plan no. permission. Yeah. They won't have permitted development to build what they like there without coming to. But the, to us yeah. first. Oh, coming yeah. back to the office. As uh, that, that rear extension, uh, to the side of it, they could build onto that and a single story extension quite extensively out, and uh, it wouldn't need power provision. But as it's in the conservation area, it's only in the rear they can they can do it. But there is, as you can see from that, that the, the rear extension only covers half the existing rear wall. <laughs> Sorry, we started a vote, or are they changing it as we're going along now, or I'm getting yeah, confused now. Yeah. All right, so everybody? Okay, let's carry on. Okay, so it's to accept the officer's recommendation, um, subject to the conditions and an additional condition to remove for development rights. Yes. Okay, um, so if you could indicate whether you're voting for or against, please, Gary Burchett. For. Jeff Elmer. Against. Ted Clark. Against. Pete Davenport. For. Nat Green. Against. Vince Hunt. For. Mark Jones. For. Mike Isherwood. Against. Edward Towers. Against. David Vasma. Against. And Paul Wayne. For. So I've got five for and six against. That motion's failed. That's, yeah, so that has failed. So we've got against the officer's recommendation. It has failed. Okay. So we who is against the officer recommendation? Mike, and reasons. Uh, I propose that we uh, refuse permission for the development uh, for the reasons given. Um, the overdevelopment of the site, overbearing. the yeah, overbearing nature uh, on the neighbouring property, um, excessive loss of light. I can't think of anything else that was said. Like chatting, I was it. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have a second for that? Sorry, sir. Natalie, Natalie. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Oh, dear. Okay, yeah, Natalie. So. Have to go with that vote. Can we have a roll call vote again, please? Okay, that, so was, oh, can, can we accept those reasons? Because I'm a bit concerned about defending an appeal on overdevelopment. And loss of light. It's overbearing. I, I meant overbearing. You, well, yeah, I've got three words here overdevelopment, overbearing, and excessive loss of light. I, I take it you mean overbearing because of its impact on the neighbouring property. That's exactly yes. Right. Yeah. right, okay. It's very and uh, overdevelopment. No, I, I'm happy so to remove that one. Remove that one, right? Okay. And excessive loss of excessive light. Excessive loss of light. Except, yeah, that's a good way of phrasing it, actually. You're, you're saying it's excess, so you <laughs> excessive <laughs> loss of light. Well, that's a, opinion, is I can't comment yeah. on that. <laughs> Are you okay with those two, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, fine. Um, so if you could indicate whether you're voting for or against a proposal to refuse. The application, um, subject to the reasons given of overpairing nature on the neighbouring property and excessive loss of light. Um, Gary Burchett. Against. Jeff Elner. For. Ted Clark. For. Steve Davenport. Against. Nat Green. For. Vince Hunt. Against. Mark Jones. Against. Mike Isherwood. For. Edward Towers. For. David Vasma. For. And Paul Wynn. Against. Yes, yeah, so you've got six, four, and five against. That's refused. Yeah. So it has been refused. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's move on to number 13. Which is Pipe Gate, I think, or Fleshy Yard Pipe Gate, Martin Drake, and Shropshire. <coughs> and we have Richard. Presenting this, thank you for being here, Richard. 
This is the outline application for a residential development, 10 self build dwellings within the settlement of Pike Gate, which is seven kilometres north of Market Drayton. Members resolved to approve the development back in June committee meeting, subject to a section 106 obligation to secure the affordable housing and long term ownership and maintenance of the public's open space. The council legal team have been working with the applicant solicitor to finalise the agreement, which is hoped to be resolved shortly. <clears throat> However, officers have received correspondence on behalf of the War Parish Council indicating a potential judicial review claim. This alleges that the committee members were misled at the June committee with regards to the War Neighbourhood Plan and in particular policy HOU1, which relates to the scale and location of new housing in the parish. As you may recall, the application site forms part of the former railway station yard, which was granted planning permission for four detached dwellings in November last year. <clears throat> so the application site is um, the red-edged um, uh, annotation. The area of green where the cursor is to the sort of southwest was a site where we approved four detached dwellings. Uh, the access is along the southern boundary to the, an existing access point onto the main road. Um, you've got a large residential development <laughs> to the south and additional public open space and a play area to the south. The site forms part of the development boundary and the land to the north is open countryside. In relation to the war local uh, plan, policy HOU supports small scale residential development of up to 10 dwellings per development. Officers acknowledge that the previous approved development for four dwellings in this current application would provide a total of 14 dwellings on the development site. Therefore, this current application combined with the previous planning application would exceed 10 dwellings um, and therefore would be in conflict with policy HOU1. Government guidance states that the development plan should be used in the determination of planning applications unless material considerations indicate otherwise. The development plan includes the national planning policy framework, the core strategy, the SAMDEV plan and the war neighbourhood plan. Policy MD3 of the SAMDEV plan allows for an increase in housing supply if there are benefits and that the development site is sustainable, whilst the MPPF promotes the effective use of land and indicates that substantial weight should be given to using brownfield land within settlements. Officers consider that there are significant material considerations which would allow an increase in the housing figure stipulated in the War Neighbourhood Plan when assessing the application against the development plan as a whole. I'd like to bring members' attention to paragraph 4.7 of the officer's report, which refers to the restoration and enhancement of this contaminated and derelict site, which has been a brownfield site for many years. Officers consider that this is a significant material consideration, and the development and restoration of this site is supported by both local and national planning policy. The development site is also located in a sustainable settlement and within the development boundary of Pipegate. Members should also be aware that the minor increase of just four dwellings will result in an increase in affordable housing provision on this development site, delivering two on-site affordable dwellings for local people. <coughs> in relation to the site, um, the area edged pink with the blue squares is the proposed site. Uh, it indicates 10 detached dwellings. Uh, the four detached dwellings that were previously approved last year uh, at the bottom of the page with the access running along the southern boundary. An area of this open space was provided to provide a buffer from the commercial units to the north um, and would add to the enjoyment of local residents. Um, this application is being recommended for approval subject to the completion of the Section 106 agreement um, for the affordable housing and open space provision. Um, Conditions are um, as, uh, as recommended in June and are in Appendix 1 of the committee report. In relation to the site itself, aerial photograph um, showing the former or the existing use of it, which was, has been as a builder's yard. Okay. It's overgrown. Um, oh, this, is the, sorry, this is the boundary sorry. from the main road looking towards the boundary of the site. Yeah. Um, this tree oh. boundary runs right along the boundary, so there's a good separation from the derelict site and the open countryside. <clears throat> this is the existing access um, serving the site. Oh, right. 
and the site does have a, a lot of building materials um, that are sort of scattered across the site, which obviously would be all removed, and the land would um, be remediated with any potential contamination that's on the site. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. Very good. Um, okay, we do have a written statement from the Walk Parish Council. So, Solicitor Kim will read it out, please. Okay. Uh, I've got a statement here from the Royal um, Parish Council, who state. Um, the Parish Council wish, wishes to avail itself of the remote method of making representations regarding the above planning application. The repre representations did comprise this note, together with the pre-action protocol letter, which formed an integral part of the representation. Um, all Parish Council requests have both be read out to committee on um, the 6th of December. The Parish Council has been prevented from submitting the pre-application protocol letter due to word count limitations, and subsequently the document was circulated to all planning team members by War Parish Council Chairman on the 1st of December 2022. Having considered the further report to the committee, the Parish Council maintains its view that the Council has failed to properly apply the neighbourhood plan, which is the most up-to-date policy against which the application has to be determined. Thus, paragraph 12 of the NPPF provides as follows. The presumption in favour of sustainable development does not change the statutory status of the development plan as the starting point for decision making. Where a planning application conflicts with an up-to-date development plan, including in any neighbourhood plans that form part of the development plan, permission should not usually be granted. Local planning authorities may take decisions that depart from up-to-date development plans, but only if material considerations in a particular case indicate that the plan should not be followed. It follows that in the view of the Parish Council, there are insufficient material considerations to justify a departure from the most up-to-date and relevant policy, which is contained in the local plan. The Parish Council maintains its position that if permission is granted contrary to the neighbourhood plan, then an application for judicial review of that decision is inevitable. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just coming back to Richard, whichever you know, comments on that statement. Do you want to comment first, Richard? No, go ahead. Um, yes, so yeah. Certainly, I mean, as in, in the presentation, I indicated that the development plan is the um, core strategy, SAMDEV, and neighbourhood plan. Obviously, the neighbourhood plan is the most recent um, uh, policies, but members have to look at it as a whole. Um, you're looking at all the policies within that. Um, as mentioned, policy MD3 does allow um, an increasing housing supply in special circumstances. Um, the MPPF makes special um, provision for looking at um, brownfield sites. Um, this is a brownfield site within a development boundary. Um, as the photographs indicate, there is um, uh, it is overgrown with um, building materials. It was the former um, railway yard, so there is probably long-term contamination. And obviously, um, the officers feel that <coughs> this development will clean up a dirty site um, at a costly um, expense to the developer. Thank you, Richard. Philip? And all I've got to add to that is I've noted the, the neighbourhood plan, the war neighbourhood plan, does encourage development of brownfield sites. And as you can see from the photograph, I don't think you'll get a better brownfield site than that. That's all I've got to say. Thank you, Phil. Fitz, come on to the there. Thanks, Chair. Um, I, I think I, I kind of remember this one reasonably well. Um, I think as a committee, when we, or when it was discussed, we gave, we gave, um, due regard to the, the, the local plan that they got from the war plan. Um, it is a brownfield site, it is scrappy, it is within the development boundary, and um, I, I think um, under the, certainly under the national planning policy framework, this would be considered an excellent site to build on, so I'm going to recommend the officer's proposal. Thank you. Steve? Absolutely. I know the site. Yeah, you, you next to speak. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Gary? Thank you, Chairman. Just um, from the solicitor, a point of, of, of checking on, on regulations. Um, Royal Parish Council, as an objector, emailed us all privately with their objection letter, in my opinion, to circumvent the three minute rule that they've been able to speak on. Um, does that mean that we, we, we've been Predisposed to a decision? No, 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 no. They can send letters out. They can send emails out. That's just check that. That's right, isn't it? What board? They can send you a book. Yeah, okay. Just, just. That's the way around the three minute rule, isn't it? 
Because if they yeah. forwarded that objection, but yeah. only, they've given three minutes to actually yeah. read okay. their Who's state there? of the That's been asked to more, actually, Minister Mike. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I, I think this should be treated as a bit of an exception site. Uh, it has to be viable for, for the developer with the extra costs of, of the cleaning up the site. Um, and I, I think War Parish Council should not be concerned that this is opening the gates to larger developments. Um, it, 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 it's an exceptional site. Um, and it doesn't mean that, you know, it's going to be disregarded and the, the, the stipulation of 10 you know, no more than 10 properties. I, I don't think they need to be worried that that's going to be disregarded in future. Thank you. Uh, Mark? Yeah, we voted on this before. I think we had the same facts before, and I'll vote the same way again for it again this time. So I, I can't see quite the pluses, to be honest. But, uh, OK, so we're able to speak. We shall go to the vote, which would better be local, please. OK, so um, we've got a... a, a bit, um, a motion to approve and sec seconded um, to accept the officer recommendation. Hang on a sec, Edwards. Just yeah. so, just just working all the legal things out here. So basically, I feel like Mark does it same as before. What we're saying basically now, yes, we have noted the war neighbourhood plan, and yes, you have got provision for brownfield sites in the neighbourhood plan, and we aren't going for further open provision. So the exception sites, therefore, this is one. Uh, and therefore, all is done and dusted. We are satisfied, aren't we? That's that's a yes. That's good. Yes, soon to be. Mr. Chair, can I ask you? Officers do not consider this an exception site. No, it's we don't. It's not we do. Because uh, the well, you're not important, important, but it isn't. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you're not important. We can. We're not. Not No, we have got to be careful in time policy yeah. terms. It's a Bradfield site. That we want to develop that. Yeah. It's not an exception site. Oh, you've got to be, yeah. Which would be outside the development That's boundary right. or, or yeah. a greenfield site. Yeah. But within the development boundaries, it's an exceptional yeah. site. Oh, it's an it's exceptional, exceptional good site to put some out. Yeah. 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 But it's not an exception site in, no, in planning no, no, terminology. Not it's not yeah. 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 Okay. Well, Excellent. I can see which way it's going. Go for it, yeah. Okay. So to accept the officer recommendation to grant permission subject to the conditions as set out in Appendix 1 and to a Section 106 agreement, you can indicate whether you're voting for or against, please. Sherry Burchett? Or. Jeff Almer? Or. Ted Clark? Or. Steve Davenport? Or. Nat Green? Or. Vince Hunt? Or. Mark Jones? Or. Mike Isherwood? Or. Edward Towers? Or. David Basma? Or. And Paul Wynn? Or. Okay, so that's you on the list. Thank you very much. Right, moving on to item 14, appeals, big decisions, any comments from anybody? We know. I think it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Item 15, uh, Day, time, next maybe. meeting, the next meeting is the 10th of January, 2 o'clock here. Thank you very much for your attendance. Sorry it's a bit long. Thank you. Uh, meeting closed. Yeah. yeah, we'll just have to wait for the comments. Yeah, I think it's the next step. Yeah, I think it's the next step.